Hello and welcome to chapter 3. In this lesson, we are going to learn about nominal and effective interest rates and we are going to do calculations for interest rates that occur on a time basis other than yearly. First, let's briefly review about simple interest and compound interest. Simple interest is based just on the original amount, which is the principal. So the amount of interest per period is equal to the principal amount multiplied by the interest rate per period. For example here, we have an investment of $250,000 in a 3-year bond at 5% per year simple interest. So the interest amount per year is $12,500, which is calculated by multiplying the $250,000 with the interest rate per year. So the total interest over three years is simply given by the interest amount per year multiplied by the total number of periods, which is three years, which is equal to $37,500. For compound interest, the amount of interest per period is based on the principal amount plus all accrued interest. Let's look at the same example. You have an investment of $250,000 for 3 years at 5% per year compounded. Now as you can see, the amount of interest every year keeps increasing and the reason is because the amount of interest is based on the principal amount plus all interest from previous periods. So for example, the amount of interest in year 2 is based on the interest rate of 5% that is charged on $262,500 and this figure is comprised of the principal amount of $250,000 plus the interest that is charged in year 1, which is $12,500. So as a result of this compounding, the amount of interest throughout the years keep increasing every year. So the primary difference between compound interest and simple interest is that compound interest includes interest on interest, while simple interest does not. Now, let us discuss about nominal interest rate and effective interest rates. Now, nominal and effective rates have the same basic relationship, just like simple interest and compound interest. Nominal and effective rates are used widely in our daily lives. So, for example, let's look at this advertisement about a credit card. The interest rate that is charged on this credit card is 15% per year. But what is not explicitly clear on this advertisement is what is the compounding period or the compounding frequency. Because if the compounding is more frequent than once a year, then you are effectively charged more than the stated amount of 15% per annum. So in this lesson, we are going to learn about nominal and effective rates and how to convert a given nominal rate into an effective rate. Now let's learn to recognize nominal rate and effective rate statements. Nominal rates are rates that neglect the effect of compounding. So for example, the statement 8% per year compounded monthly. So the phrase 8% per year is the nominal rate which neglects the effect of monthly compounding. Next example is 2% per month compounded weekly. So in this statement, the phrase 2% per month is the nominal rate which does not take into account the effect of weekly compounding. Now effective rates on the other hand are rates that already take into account the effect of compounding. So for example, effective 8.3% per year compounded monthly. 
So in this statement, we phrase effective 8.3% per year is the effective rate that already takes into account the effect of monthly compounding. Nominal rates can be converted into the equivalent effective rate, but because effective rates are rates that consider the effect of compounding, therefore, effective rates are always bigger than nominal rates. Now let's scrutinize this statement. 15% per annum compounded monthly. So what we do know now is that the rate 15% per annum is a nominal rate because the rate does not take into account the effect of monthly compounding. So what it means is that the interest rate per month is 1.25% and the frequency of compounding throughout one year is 12 because the nominal rate is compounded monthly and there are 12 months in a year. So we have a graphical representation of what's happening here. We have a sequence of 12 boxes where each of the box represents an interest rate of 1.25% per month. So we know that the nominal interest rate is 15% per year. But what we also would like to find out is the effective rate for the year. Because we do know that the interest rate is compounded monthly. So you would expect that the amount of interest increases from month to month. So let's put some numbers into the statement so that we can find out how much is the effective annual interest rate. So we borrow $100 for one year at 15% per annum compounded monthly and we want to find out how much would our interest be. So we know that the present worth of money is $100 and the interest rate is 1.25% per month and N is equal to 12 months because the nominal rate is compounded monthly in a year so therefore the total frequency of compounding in a year is 12. So we are essentially turning a present worth of money into a future worth of money at 1.25% interest rate per month over 12 months. So using the usual formula and plugging in all the values, we get a future worth of $116.07. So our original loan of $100 has turned into a debt of $116.07 by one year in one year. So the interest that is charged on this loan is $16.07 and therefore the effective annual interest rate on this loan is 16.07% per annum which is slightly higher than the stated nominal rate of 15% per annum. Now luckily there is a straightforward way of converting a given nominal rate into an equivalent rate and we will be using this formula here. So I is the effective rate that we are interested to find out for a stated period. R is the nominal rate for the same time period and M is the number of times that the nominal interest rate is compounded over the same time period. Now this table here shows how to use the formula. So let's say we are given a compounding frequency of monthly and we want to know what is the effective annual interest rate. So therefore, the nominal interest rate R must be given for a time period for a year and M must be set to 12 because the given nominal rate will be compounded 12 times in a year. Similarly, if we are given a compounding frequency of monthly 
and we would like to find out what is the effective semi-annual interest rate so therefore the nominal rate r must be given for a time period of six months and m must be set to six because the nominal rate will be compounded six times in a period of six months so let's try this simple example together we have an interest rate of 12 percent per year compounded quarterly and we are interested to find out what is the effective annual interest rate so we want to find out what is i the effective annual interest rate given that the nominal annual rate is 12 percent per year and that this 12 percent per year is compounded four times in a year so m must be set to four so when we plug in all these values we get i which is the effective annual interest rate of 12.55 percent and this annual rate this effective annual rate takes into account the effect of compounding quarterly compounding in a year and that is why the effective annual rate is slightly higher than the stated nominal interest rate of 12 percent per year here are more examples on nominal and effective rates for you to try so for nominal rate they are rather straightforward because no compounding period is involved so in this example you are given a nominal rate of 1.5 percent per month and you are asked to determine the nominal rate per quarter per year and for two years so for a period for one quarter there are three months so you can just multiply the nominal rate per month with a total period of three months and that gives you a nominal rate of 4.5 percent per quarter so you can try the rest of the example for a period of one year and two years now let's try the example for effective rate now a credit card rate is 1.5 percent compounded monthly we want to determine the effective rate per quarter and per year so for a quarter there are three months and the nominal rate given is 1.5 percent per month so r the nominal rate for three months is just the 1.5 percent per month multiplied with three months and that gives you a nominal rate of 4.5 percent in a quarter m must be set to 3 because there are three months in a quarter so this nominal rate of 4.5 percent will be compounded three times in that quarter so plugging in all these values we get an effective quarterly rate of 4.57 percent which is as expected slightly higher than the nominal rate of 4.5 percent so please try the example for a period of one year now let's talk about effective continuous interest effective continuous interest happens when the compounding frequency m approaches infinity so in this case the effective continuous rate is given by e to the power of r minus 1 where r is the nominal rate so for example 14 percent per year compounded continuously translates into an effective continuous rate of 15.03 percent per year right so we have reached the end of the lesson thank you for your attention